Jesus, blessed the Savior. Um, greetings from the A Street Church here uh, in the city of Griffin, Georgia. I want to greet you in the excellent name of Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that you have the joy of the Lord in your hearts. Man, what a wonderful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord has done it again. He has given to you and to me <clears throat> his grace and his mercies. Thank you so much for joining the A Street Noon Study. I apologize that was a little slight delay, but nevertheless, we're moving right past that. Thank you for joining us. I'm asking that if you would do me this favor before we get started, and that is that you would gather inform family, friends, or neighbors, co-workers, uh, the cat, the dog, or whomever, and invite them to this particular uh, Facebook Live broadcast as we want to be able to rightly divide the word so that we can be a blessing unto you. Because that your time is so valuable, we want to go ahead and jump into the scriptures. Um, our scriptures for today, our lesson for today is <clears throat> John chapter 15 verses 18 through 25 and also John 16 verses 1 through 4. So we want to uh, focus in on that particular text. In John 15 verses 18 through 25 and likewise chapter 16 verses 1 through 4 amen <clears throat> and we want to talk about why the hate why the hate all of us we have haters all of us as someone that hates on us either it's for a reason or it's for a unknown reason they all have haters that who hates on us directly versus indirectly and like I said earlier sometimes people hate on you or they dislike you and you haven't done anything to them. Well, unfortunately, we cannot control how other people act, but we can control how we respond. And so that's a lesson that we cannot learn in a 30 minute or 60 minute segment. That's a lesson that takes years of experience and sometimes a lifetime. That is to be able to control ourselves to a degree that we can respond the way that Christ would respond to his haters in his particular day. Now, 
some hate is just justified but then there's some hate that's not justified but as I said earlier we can't control how people act or how people view us but we can control how we respond and that's a, a lesson that Jesus was trying to teach his disciples. He was telling them, and here in John chapter 15, he was telling them while he was in the upper room and they were conversating as they was at the Lord's table. Jesus was telling them, his disciples, that when I leave, or better yet, before I leave or when you leave this room, however that you want to, uh, the terminology, however that you want to terminate, however you want to determine it, is that you're going to have some haters. You're going to have some haters. And some of the hate is going to be directed towards you, but the source of the hate is not at you but it's the person that is inside of you. In other words, he says that you're going to hate me, uh, but yet people are going to hate you for my sake. Just because that we are connected, just because you are my disciples, just because that you are my followers, people are going to hate on you. And so that hate, once again, is going to be directly towards you, and then it's going to be indirectly towards you. But I'm, let me repeat myself for the third time, is that regardless of why people hate you, we cannot control how they feel towards us, but we can control how we respond towards them. Listen to what Jesus says in chapter 15, verse 18. He says that if the world hates you, understand that it hated me before it hated you. So if you are of the world, then the world would love you as its own. But because that you are not of the world, and because that I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. So remember the word I spoke to you, a servant is not greater than his master, for that if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. And if you keep my word, they will also keep yours. But they would do all these things on the account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. Lord have mercy. Verse 22 declares that if I had not come and spoken to them, then they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. For the one that who hates me also hates my father. So if I had not done the works among them, no one else had done, they would be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father but this happened so that the statement was written in their law might be fulfilled they hated me for no reason wow so once again Jesus is speaking to his disciples there in the upper room and one of the topics of the discussions that he has with them is about hate that he says number one is that be prepared for hate because they hated me and because that they hated me they're going to hate you and they hate you as well as they have hated me because I'm not of the world in other words I'm different anytime that you are in Christ you are supposed to be different and it's the difference in you that people hate that you're not like everybody else, that you're not like the norm. Yeah, you got some sin, 
but you're different because God holds you in a special regard. And Jesus says that they don't quite understand this, is that they hated me. When they hate me, they hate the Father, they hate God, they hate Yahweh himself because God has rules and people want to live without rules. They don't want to be regulated. They don't want to be controlled. They don't want to be told what they could and cannot do. Or what they should and should not do. And, 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 and so they hate rules and regulations. But they don't understand that according to Jesus is that when they hated me, they hated the Father. Why? Because he and the Father, they are one. And I like what... <clears throat> verse 25 says now when you begin to um, investigate their hate when you begin to analyze their hate he says that they have no reason or better yet they have no reason they have no definition they have no evidence that they should hate me they have hated me for no reason. So even, even when they can't have or find any fault in you, it's a just because hate. Mm, mm, mm. Just because hate. You walk into the room, the hate starts. Lord have mercy. You leave the room, the hate starts or the hate continues. You wear a certain piece of wardrobe that they don't like. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, they hate you. They're hating you for no reason because you have not done anything to offend them except being yourself. And being yourself will always defend people or offend people, shall I say. You know, when we were children, um, our parents would tell us about things that we are going to encounter. Now, when you go to school, you got this expectation. This is what's going to happen. You no, know, when you go to work, this is what's going to happen. You no, know, when you play sports, this is what's going to happen. They would tell us of things that's going to happen in our life and this is what Jesus was telling us telling the disciples he says now this is what's going to happen to you now is that people are going to literally hate on you and so he's telling them what's waiting for them he's telling them what lies ahead but yet although he's telling them what lies ahead and he's telling them about the future. He also tells them this because he does not want them to lose their faith. He does not want them to lose, listen, their, their hope. He does not want them, you know, persecution is ahead. He doesn't want them to be afraid of their future. Although their future is not going to be a day of sunshine. It's going to be challenges. There are going to be storms. There are going to be some adversities. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But Jesus says that listen, now the reason why I'm telling you these things is so that you won't be surprised, so that you will not stumble. I'm telling you these things because I want you to know that these things are going to happen to you because I told you so. In other words, you know, just not walking down the street and things just happen for no rhyme or no reason. The Lord said that these things were going to happen unto us. And when I speak of the hate here on today, yeah, we have social hate. But then there's also a spiritual hate. You hate, you're hated on because of what you believe. 
You're hated on because of your faith. You are hated on because of your connection. You're hated on because you are a part of God's family. So the question becomes, why all of the hate? <clears throat> well, when we walk with the Lord, there's some things that we have to consider. When we walk with the Lord, there are things that we have to consider. One thing that we have to consider is that how am I going to endure the suffering? because of the hate that Jesus has forecasted. Number two, am I sufficiently ready? Am I built for this type of disdain, unlikeness, or hate that comes from the fact that I know Jesus? And not only that I know him, but I've made him Lord and Savior of my life. So am I mm, going to be ready for all of this hate? Mm. Lord have mercy. Well, verses chapter, chapter 15 and 16 helps us to understand that when we encounter these uh, levels of hatred, Mm, mm, mm. that we should be prepared and, and there's a proper way to respond. Proper way to respond to the hate. Can I give you three reasons and then I'm finished with this thought of mine. This, the first reason, uh, but yet we can respond to hate by being or by being prepared for the persecution. We can respond to hate by being prepared for the persecution that we're going to experience. And chapter 15 verses 18 through 21, uh, that helps us to understand that we can be prepared for the hate <clears throat> or, be, or be ready for the persecution because see when we read verses 18 through 21 the passage uh, reveals three things in my mind number one it, it reveals the difficulties secondly it reveals the beauty and it reveals the logic. Now, when I say difficulties, I mean um, uh, it's difficult because of what we're going to experience. He's not speaking about joy. He's not speaking about happiness. He's not speaking about peace. He's speaking about, listen, people hating on me. People hating on me. People don't like me. People, amen, uh, feel that I'm a threat to them to the degree that they have red flags. They suspect or suspicious of me. That's difficult when you first try to show yourself to be friendly. That's one of the that's one of the things that the Bible teaches. That when we have uh, when we want the ability or when we are trying to make friends he says that first show yourself to be friendly well how can you be friendly to folk that hate you especially to those who don't know you or secondly that you've done nothing to them But the scripture says, be ready for that type of persecution. Lord have mercy. It's coming. And there's nothing that we can do about it. Then secondly, you, you know, 
uh, is beautiful because <clears throat> it reminds us that the Lord loves us so much that he is preparing us for this type of reaction towards us for these situations in life he's preparing us you know that's what good parents do they prepare their children for the difficult situations in life that's the that's the beauty of it so therefore when I face this unwarranted hate I'm prepared I can deal with it hey when I when 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 parents prepare their children for bullies when the bully comes at your child your child is prepared to deal with the bully <clears throat> excuse me that he, he he prepares us and so so Jesus says this he says that now I'm calling you or I'm preparing you for this sin filled world this hostile world this fallen world listen they hate you but they really don't hate you they hate the person that's on the inside of you and let me tell you the beauty of it because it's man who looks on the outside but it's God who looks on the inside and listen and when people don't understand you it isn't that they looking on the outside they hate you because they don't understand the inside of you who good God Almighty yes the outside is sinful but the inside is repentant mm. the outside listen is carnal but the inside is spiritual the outside is selfish but the inside is serving. They can't see the inside. And this is what Jesus is saying. He says that now I'm preparing you. Because it's going to happen. So we see, you, you know, be ready for the persecution because it's, it's difficult. It's difficult because of the situation that we're facing. It's unfair. It's unwarranted. Is unequal but regardless is it's the situation or it's the world that we live in it's beautiful because he reminds us that that he's preparing us and and this preparation it demonstrates his love towards us it's beautiful He's demonstrating his love towards us because he's preparing us for the future. Now, it becomes logical. Finally, it becomes logical. It, be, it becomes logical. Why? Because people mm -hmm, are going to seem. How, how can I put this? People are going to feel out of place. you're gonna feel out of place and so therefore by feeling out of place those of us our hearts and minds and our values is going to be foreign or going to be misunderstood by those who do not follow Christ so Jesus says in verse 20 he says that our master mm, who lives in us who loves us And who wants who who requires obedience see obedience is the way that we are connected to God 
and our obedience to God is going to be misunderstood by those who do not follow God. That's the hate. That's why Jesus says, you know, hey, I must be about my father's business. When his mother and when his brothers, when they was looking for him. And when he was in the synagogue teaching. And he was said, you know, his family was said, come on, come on, come on, come on with your family. Your mama's looking for you. Your brothers and your sisters are looking for you. Come on. Jesus says, no, 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 no. Who is my family? Because I must be about my father's business. When you got the service, remember what we taught at church. Service is not commitment to others. Service is in the heart. So therefore, you're not committed to an entity or a person. But you serve because of the mandate that the Lord has given unto you. So you can serve those who do not look like you. You can serve those, amen, who don't, who is of a different skin color, different gender, a different race. Service is in the heart because your service is rendering unto God. Mm. So, what we believe and what the world believes is two different things. You know, we believe and we trust in the report of Jesus Christ, the resurrection, the ascension, and the sitting, <clears throat> and the return. We believe the world, I mean, we believe the Lord's report, rather. But the world have a different report that they believe. They don't believe that he's the Messiah. They don't believe that, yes, he died and he resurrected himself. They don't believe that he's God the Son. They don't believe that he's sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Hey, those are two different reports. And although that there are two different reports, listen. He says to us, from a logical standpoint, it don't make sense to them. As a matter of fact, if we try to understand it with our own mind, we will miss the understanding, the mysteries of the gospel. The mysteries of the deity of Christ. So therefore, we walk by faith, not by sight. Sight says, I understand it if I can see it. Isn't that what Thomas reported after he heard the reports of the other disciples? Hey, until I can see him for myself and thrust my hands or touch his wounds, I shall not believe. And Jesus compliments Thomas. He says, okay, Thomas, if that's what it takes for you to believe, now you know since you've touched, since you believe, but blessed are they who have not seen, but yet they have believed. Lord have mercy. So therefore, hey, when it comes to hate, be ready for the persecution. Number two, not only be ready for the persecution, but stand firm in the midst of the hate. Stand firm in the face of the hate. Jesus says that, listen, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But he's saying that, listen, uh, he didn't bring sin upon those who heard him. But what he has brought was a realization and the opportunity 
for people to accept him accept him as Lord and Savior so because he came down 40 and two generation wrapped in swaddling clothes because he came down a man and and tabernacle among us there is no excuse for those who have seen or have not seen those who have heard or have not heard because the evidence is found in the Word of God mm, Lord have mercy so Jesus says that listen that the gospel has been spread out among the world where they can be a witness they can have a better understanding or they can gain understanding of what salvation is all about hey you got to stand firm in the face of the hate hey People cannot cover up their sin. We cannot declare, hey, that we have not seen, we have not heard of Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. These particular Jews, hey, they had witnessed the best thing that they could have seen. But tragically, they rejected what they needed and they pursued what they wanted. Mm. They rejected what they needed and they pursued what they wanted. All of our wants are not good. But he's able to supply all of our needs. So, Jesus talked with so much passion. Jesus talked with brilliance he was a man but yet he spoke as a God and his speech Lord have mercy ushered in a new revival of repentance but the people rejected or they hated on him now for many Although that the truth has been revealed, they have still rejected him. So, what I'm trying to tell you today is that, hey, we're going to be hated. We're going to be hated on. But we respond to the hate. Number one is be ready for the persecution. Stand firm in the persecution. But then lastly, be resilient in hate. Mm. Be resilient in persecution. In other words, don't stop believing. Don't stop mm -hmm, serving. Don't stop talking about Jesus Christ be resilient in the midst of the persecution be resilient in the midst of the hate because those who hate Jesus also hate his followers and they don't express their hate and their emotions only but they display their hate in their actions but regardless, don't be shocked, but yet be prepared. Hmm. Don't be shocked, but be prepared. And as they try to push you away, or as they try to ostracize you, be resilient in your faith. Be resilient in your speech. Be resilient in your praise. Be resilient in your song. Be resilient in your worship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
when these disciples first heard Jesus speaking of these words, they were fearful. Lord, this is what we have to look forward to? Where's the love? This is what we have to experience? Is the hate? This is what we have to experience, the persecution? This is what uh, our faith is reduced to? That now, that my quality of life mm, 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 is not one of happiness, joy. Look at all of this that I have to go through. Hey, Jesus says this, that regardless of what you want to go, well, number one, he wants to make sure that you understand that hate is coming. So you need to be aware because I'm preparing you. And here's what I like. Chapter 16, verse number one. He says, I've told you these things in order to keep you from stumbling. I told you these things so that you won't fall. I told you these things so that you can be strong. I told you these things so that you can be mm -hmm, a person who's resilient, who can take a licking and keeps on ticking. One who can bounce back from the hate. Mm. But then he says, that although that they hate, you need to know this. Although you're on the spirit's hate, you still need to know who's in control. Wow. He makes it clear that he is still in control. So, he says this. Not only is God in control, I want you to listen to this, but you can be resilient, not only because God is in control, but he also says the Holy Spirit will reside with you. So in other words, my presence is with you in spirit. Now, hey, I know that persecution, hate can be scary. But he says, I'm preparing you so that when that time comes, you won't be fearful because I have not given you the spirit of fear, but that of love and power and that of a sound mind. I have not given you. None of these things so that you can shake and quiver. But I'm preparing you to be able to stand in the midst of adversity, conflict, drama, lies. I'm preparing you because they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. People will lie on you because of your relationship there with God. He says... I'm keeping, I'm telling you this so you will not stumble, so that you will not lose your heart, so that you will not lose your faith, so that you will not lose your hope. Hmm. And he says, I've told you these things not only to prepare you, but I've told you these things so that you will have peace. Wow, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's a great challenge. It's a great joy that you can have peace in the midst of conflict. That you can have peace in the midst of persecution. That you can have peace in the midst of people slandering you. You can have peace, listen, when people are just plain hating on you. And the reason why that you can have peace is because he has prepared you. 
He has forecast that this thing will happen. So we don't really have to run from drama. We don't have to run from the lies. We don't have to run from persecution. We don't have to run from people. Because you know how we are. We say, well, we don't have no dealings with fake people. Fake people are nothing more than sinful people. In newsflash, all have sinned. All have sinned. Jesus never ran from someone because that they were fake. He never separated himself from people who thought that they were better than somebody else. Those were people he had to check. Those were people he had to correct. But he was still in the midst of their presence. As a matter of fact, hey, the, the consensus of Jesus was that he was not the Messiah because he hung out with sinners, fake people. Not only did he hang out with fake people, but he also forgave the sins of fake people. And the religious uh, community declared that only God can forgive sin. Not knowing that he was God the Son already. He says, stand firm in the midst of persecution. Why? Because, listen, I'm telling you these things so that you would not stumble, so that you would not fail. I'm telling you these things because, look, I am, uh, 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 I'm telling you these things so that you may have peace. I'm preparing you for the worst. I'm preparing you for bad things. So therefore, by telling us, by preparing us, by giving us peace, this will ultimately give us this. The boldness and the courage that we need to be courageous. Because the only way that we're going to get new people to come to the kingdom, we got to go into territories that's unfamiliar, territories that are uncomfortable. Go ye to the highways and byways, go ye into the world, make, to make disciples, teaching them the things that I've taught. You got to go into territory. That makes you uncomfortable. He didn't say separate. No. I see it on Facebook all the time. We got some mean Christians. Whose priorities they are in the wrong place. I understand that people hurt you. And I understand that you don't want to deal with people. Hey I got it. Mm. But the command is. Hmm. Jesus never separated himself from people unless it was prayer time. Unless it was prayer time when it came when it came to his meals, he ate with sinners. When he came to his drinks, he ate with sinners. When it came to uh, his social outings, when he met the woman at the well, even when he came to church, the demonized boy, he always interacted with sinners. But we who's been saved by grace, or I ain't there with fake people. <laughs> really? Gotcha. So, as I get ready to close, 
rejection. We take that thing personal. I take it personally. You take it personally. Sometimes it doesn't even bother us. As a matter of fact, sometimes we're glad that we are rejected. But regardless of your reaction to rejection, amen, you need to be able to understand is that you're going to be rejected not because of who you are, but because of who you're connected to. So that lets me know that the weapons of warfare they are not carnal, but they're spiritual. There are some things in our lives. So, when you encounter people who hate on you, be ready for persecution. Stand firm in the persecution. And be resilient in the persecution. Remember, he says, but be of good cheer, for that I have already overcome the world. You can still walk in victory. So, it's my prayer that as you walk, in the hate, in the midst of your haters, that you still have the victory in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow, what a lesson. What a lesson. I have just enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you so much, amen, for sharing with me. It's my prayer. Listen, that this lesson it's going to make you a better son or daughter of the Most High. So that when you leave this place, when you leave this study, you can say that I'm stronger, I'm wiser, and I'm so much the better. In Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Allow me to share a few announcements with you. Um, uh, of course, that this coming Sunday, what well, past Sunday was, was, was Palm Sunday. You know, this is when uh, Jesus sat on the donkey and he looked over into the city and he began to weep. And as he went through the city, amen, the people lined the streets there with palm branches. As he walked over, they cried out, Hosanna. But just a week later, they no longer cried out, Hosanna. They cried out, mm -hmm, crucify him. This week, we're going to celebrate the resurrection. The resurrection is coming Friday. It's going to be Good Friday. Is when they laid him down. When they put him on the cross and laid him in the tomb. Yes. But early Sunday morning. We're not celebrating Easter. We're celebrating the resurrection. Well, our resurrection Sundays or our sunrise, which we call it, a resurrection service, sunrise service. Uh, will be the A Street Church is hosting uh, this year's sunrise service. But however, the sunrise service is virtual. It's going to start at 6:30 a.m. Dr. Stephen Norris from the First Baptist Church here in Griffin is going to be our speaker. Amen. So after that, our 9:45 service worship. Amen. Um, we're going to be celebrating the resurrection. We're going to be celebrating the resurrection after that. After the re after the message, um, we shall have our traditional uh, resurrection program, where our kids, our children, a man can recite their Easter speech, as they will say. After that, we're going to have a egg hunt, an egg hunt. And for those of you who want to participate and to help us uh, with the egg hunt, uh, please contact our sister uh, Joanne Middlebrooks because she needs assistance. She needs some helpers. She needs some workers. 
So please contact her so that we can make this a great and a grand Easter hunt for our children. Amen. Um, we still wanting you to call and to touch and to reach out to those which are sick, those which are shut in, those which are bereaved. We lift all of them up in prayer. Those who are celebrating your birthdays, those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries, we are celebrating you as well. May the Lord continue to cover you and to hold you, amen, and to allow you to see another year. So please be mindful of that, of these announcements, and uh, we will see you um, this coming Sunday online, Facebook Live, or you can go to yahoo.com uh, and when you go to Yahoo, search for the A Street Baptist Church of Griffin, um, because we're not the only A Street Baptist Church in the nation. So to be explicit, A Street Baptist Church here in Griffin on the Yahoo, or you can follow us on our Facebook Live. Well, that concludes my announcements. That concludes the lesson for today. Hey, it's my blessing that God will just hold you, keep you, walk with you, talk with you, give you the assurance that you are His very own. So let us receive benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord may lift His countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his face and smile upon you and may the Lord give you his peace, his peace, his peace. Till we meet again Sunday.